At the 23rd of July Council meeting on Agenda Item 20, Questions Without Notice, Councillor Charles asked two questions. Question one was to the elected members who voted for the 2018-19 budget, if they wanted to give the gallery and the community as to why they supported the motion to be put and the 2018-19 budget. This is the response he received. Questions without notice, 23rd July meeting. I have a question for each of the five councillors who voted to gag the budget debate. Do any of these councillors wish to take the opportunity to make a statement to the community and to the ratepayers as to why you supported the motion? Here in the council chamber should be the ideal forum to elaborate. Uh, I really think uh, you're pressing the luck there, but I'll leave it up to the elected members if they want to answer that. Yes, Councillor Jenkins. Um, I'm happy to answer that. I uh, voted to close the debate because I was of the opinion that the chair had lost control of the meeting and I thought that closing the debate and voting was one way of getting the meeting back on, um, back on track. I provided a full statement to the newspaper which they published online and which I shared um, with the public on my um, Victor Harbour Council um, Facebook page which um, explained um, the reason that I voted the way that I did and what I was going to say if I had the opportunity to speak, um, which I was hoping to, um, to speak, but I, um, I didn't get that opportunity and felt that the way that we needed to move on was to, to, um, to move the motion. Um, in retrospect, it would have been great to have continued the debate, um, but however, I felt that um, the, there was arguments pursuing between the chair and the member that was speaking um, and that the chair had lost control of the meeting, so I voted to move it. Yes, Councillor Schaefer. Uh, yes, I second that, that motion. Uh, at that stage, it was my belief that uh, Councillor Charles had been given uh, two warnings isn't a really nice word to use, but two warnings to, to wind up. Uh, both of those, um, he continued. Um, I felt that he was a little rude in the way that he responded to that. And uh, so therefore, I second the motion. I must admit that as soon as I second the motion, I realised I'd start full the debate and I would have liked to have said a, a few more things in relation to the budget. But that was the decision that I made at that moment and, um, and that's what it is. Can't do anything about it. Thank you. Uh, yes, Councillor Chibbert. Your Worship, I move the motion to um, stop the debate because I felt Councillor Charles was showing total disrespect to the Chair and to the rules of debate of Council. Question two from Councillor Charles was to Councillor Jenkins on her interview from the Times newspaper Facebook page posted on the 12th of July 2018 about her comments on supporting the motion to be put and supporting the 2018-19 budget, yet in contrast, at the same time supporting rate capping by the state government. Let's see what was said. Question without notice, 23rd July 2018. Councillor Jenkins on the Times Facebook page, July the 12th, 2018, 4.13pm, you made the following statement. I support this budget. I'm also in support of the council rate capping and that's being introduced by the state government as I believe that this will provide a fairer, more sustainable fiscal framework for the local government sector as a whole. How do you justify sitting on both sides of the fence as you voted for a local rate rise of 81.25% above the current CPI, which is 1.9%, and then say you report you support rate capping, which is based on CPI? Please I'm explain actually, how this works. I'm actually going to refuse the question because you're attacking a fellow elected member. Well, I'm actually asking a question, but that's fine. I'm happy to answer that, um, Your Worship. I don't feel attacked. Yep. At, I don't feel attacked at all. Um, as a, as a council that is a sea change council, um, 
when you look at our expenditure and when you look at our rates, um, sea change councils do on the whole have higher rates than other councils that are well established. The funding that we have and the funding that we get from government is based on census counts which are done in the middle of winter when a third of our population isn't here. So we get less funding than um, per population than um, councils that are not sea change councils or councils that are based on tourism. It is my belief, um, and the rate capping legislation is very new, but it is my belief that when the rate capping comes in, it is not going to be CPI rate capping for every council, that councils, um, depending on their needs, will be capped at a different level. It is my understanding, and I may be wrong because this is new legislation, that councils that require higher rates because they have higher levels of need will have those rates capped at a different level than councils that do not have those same needs. So for example, our level of um, rate capping may be different from say Marion rate capping or from Okaparingi rate capping. Um, we are yet to see. But based on what I've read so far, um, I think that the rate capping will be different and that councils can also have the opportunity if there are major infrastructure projects or if there are um, storm, storm events or things that they need um, greater money for, which will actually raise, rights, uh, raise rates, um, they are able to apply to an independent body. Um, if you read what I put on my Facebook um, post and um, what I'd said to the Times, um, that was my justification for that. I actually think that we needed to have the rate rise that we did. If you artificially decrease rates um, when you actually need to have that rate rise, you might, it might look good for a couple of years, but then you're going to have to really hike rates up to cover um, expenses. So my view was that we needed to do that, um, and that is what I was going to say if, if that debate occurred. However, I'm also of the opinion that we need to um, have that rate capping and look at rate capping and justify our, our rates. So while on one hand it may look like I'm sitting on the fence, I'm actually not sitting on the fence. Um, I agree with what we did and we need to be sustainable as we go forward. Thank you. I'll take that as answered. Councillor Jenkins in her reply has stated that she would like to have entered the debate on the budget. But unfortunately, the motion to have the motion be put stifled that debate. It didn't have to be voted for. It could have been voted against by my fellow councillors, including Councillor Jenkins. They chose to not continue the debate by supporting that particular motion, which effectively closed down the debate on the budget on that night. Councillors, we all have a choice. The question beckons. Was Councillor Jenkins correct in her statement? Did the Mayor lose control or was he in control? I believe Council meeting procedures allows the Councillor to withdraw their move to second the motion, which would have given Councillor Schofield the opportunity to speak to the original motion or any of the councillors who voted for the motion to be put could have voted against the motion to have their say. It is election year for council. I'm David Kemp for South Coast Television, your voice, your community. South Coast Television, your community, your voice.